Hi, this is May Sayed Ali, and I'm the host of the G42 On Air podcast series. We are excited to be recording the G42 On Air live from Jitex at the G42 stand. It's absolutely beautiful here. The G42 is a technology company, a global leader in AI and cloud computing, with the purpose of inventing a better every day. Each episode in this series will transport you into insightful market-leading conversations about transformative technology to drive positive progress across industries and societies, all in less than 30 minutes. With me today is Thomas Pramutam, CEO of Freesight. Thomas is a digital transformation leader and technology advocate who has supported and driven government smart city strategies and initiatives in Asia. Thomas now leads the Presight AI and analytics businesses in G42 with a focus on creating nation-building partnerships in Menica region through capabilities, enablement, and sharing of G42 journey in supporting UAE's digital transformation successes. So here we are at Jayatex with Thomas Pamotam, CEO of Presight. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me on. Don't you feel the energy here is amazing, isn't it? I know. Finally, we are full-fledged back with no mask. It's super exciting to be yes, here. Yes, it's wonderful to be here. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Thomas. Thomas, we have a very interesting topic to cover today. And we are talking about how can AI and big data analytics drive transformation to deliver scalable value. But before we dig in this amazing and interesting topic, could you tell us more about you and your journey with the G42 and a little bit more about Presight? Oh, I think um, let's start with me. So I had the privilege and opportunity to come to the UAE two years ago and the ability to lead an amazing technology company. Uh, I have a team of amazing data scientists and engineers who built the most advanced AI and analytics platform that's been deployed in the UAE. Presight is three years old. <clears throat> We've been serving the UAE client uh, for the past years. And in the most recent 18 months, we have taken this technology into the Minaka region, Middle East, North Africa, Central Asia. And now we have the privilege of taking this technology to change lives and drive digital transformation in these countries around us. Well, this is what I would like to talk more about. When you talk about changing lives, and mostly our day-to-day -day lives, um, be it uh, the people, the nation, and even the government sectors, but can we just try to divide the topic a little bit? We hear AI, we hear big data analytics, and it influences our life. But can you give us how are they correlated? Are, are if, and if they are correlated? Well, I think the first thing you do is try not to put them in separate buckets, right? Because I think that will confuse you and confuse our friends listening. Um, you should look at it as how it interacts together. So data have always existed. Yeah, we know all of that. Big data is today, you know, it's large volume, there's large velocity of it, there's so much data that comes out of everything that we do. And AI is really something that has helped us make life a lot easier. So let me give you some example. When you wake up and you say, hey Siri, tell me what's the weather today. There's a piece of narrowband AI in it that understands what you have asked and seeks the answers that you want. When you head out to work, you look at your Google map and you say, what's the best route that I take? It computes a large amount of data collected by multiple sensors and transforms it into a, let's take this route, you are likely to get to work in time. And then when you get home at the end of the day, you turn on your Netflix and you say, hey, season four of my favorite show, and it ends. And Netflix tells you, hey, you know what, based on what you've been watching, these are the options that you should see next. And these are examples of how data, analytics, and AI are touching us. But I think a big part of where we want to get to, and, and hopefully with you in this conversation, is how do we take this knowledge of what we have shared and what have touched us and bring it to organizations and bring it to countries to really deploy and apply this technology for the betterment of citizen life, you know, and for the betterment of humanity. So when, when you talk about our day-to-day -day life, I can completely understand it because it relates to us. And I, and I know I definitely see how Netflix is impacting me every day. <laughs> but exactly, when we talk about the, the AI um, and how, how do you tap into the potential of predictive analytics? So if you can just first tell me, what does predictive analytics mean? Well, 
You know the name Presight. So let me give you a bit of insight into that. Presight was coined, it's a, it's a new word, it's Presight was coined to be able to foretell an event, but not by astrology, not by looking at the stars, but by understanding data and using technology. So that was the intent and core of Presight. We developed an AI-based predictive platform that looks at data and helps you predict possible outcomes. It anticipates possible outcomes. In, 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 in the way it's applied in situations, it studies data, a lot of data. It puts it through a machine learning process, something that we call it's a learning process, just like how our cognitive um, capabilities are developed. And then it's on its own, it's able to understand and identify patterns that may anticipate events that are forthcoming. So you're not a fortune teller, you're saying, right? No, we wish, <laughs> we wish we were. We might, we might need less technology there, but no. So we relied a lot on facts, data, and technology to come close to what a fortune teller might do. So can, can you give an example of what kind of uh, something to do, for example, with finance um, industry? So I can, could you do any prediction uh, from that perspective? I think that's, that's an excellent question. Um, the common one would be, could we predict which stock would rise okay. and which stock would fall so we can make more money? But let's not go into that space. But that's, that's very lot... interesting, I think, for the yeah, audience. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of AI and data around that, and I'm sure you can find it out. But something that's more pragmatic to organizations. Financial transactions for organizations and countries come in millions and billions of records. And the improved and increasing governance and compliance requirements that is imposed on such organization require them to find abnormal transactions. Now, how do you look at a billion records associated with multiple systems around it, from your ERP system to your banking system to your transaction, to identify something that might be abnormally? An abnormally may not be a fraud. It could be a mispayment, it could be a late payment, or it could eventually be a fraud. Right? You could apply big data analytics and AI to this. So this is how we do it. We put the transactions and the big data through an algorithm that identifies patterns of normal and abnormal uh, patterns. Second, we create an algorithm that learns to look at this data so that on its own, over time, it detects and identifies and alerts to a human user exceptions that are happening in the system. Okay. Over time, you take this algorithm and you improve it. And it starts learning on its own how, it start, how to doing the whole it process. Learns, it learns the patterns okay. and it applies to the algorithm, but it doesn't become self-aware. Right? So AI is not about creating a self-aware engine, but it's about automating intelligently the ability to analyze large amount of data, the ability for it to learn and automate in high-speed, uh, high-computer resource algorithms that helps a person, that helps an organization do an incredible large amount of work that can't be done normally by a human on its own, or we can do it a lot faster. But still, there's a human involvement to go through these data and confirm it and everything, right? Like, yes. This is the whole idea of the combination yes. between the human and the There AI. is always a need for a human operator in the world of AI, and, and many people have looked at AI and said the future of AI is when AI becomes self-aware and controls the world that we live in. It's never the case. Right? We should always look at AI as a way to enable us to do what we need to do better, to answer the questions that have been asked for decades, for centuries. How do we better the lives of citizens? How do we become more efficient? How do we build better communities? And use that as a way to apply AI, big data, machine learning, in a way that really changes the, the, the lives of people on the ground. You know, thinking about changing our lives, now since like hopefully the pandemic is completely over, I'm so happy that we are without masks. Oh yes, we, we are. can see it everywhere. <laughs> um, talking about um, going and visiting countries again. So tourism, how could Presight help um, countries to open their tourism in the right direction, in the right way? Because it's been a couple of years, some of them has been closed for a while. So could you help them in creating a better journey for their tourism and helping their ecosystem further? Yeah, I think that's a very timely and interesting question from you. You know, maybe you've been following my team around and know that this is a Just a little bit. Yeah? I also want to travel too. All right, so, <laughs> So tourism boards in the region have come to us and say, hey, could you answer a question like this? Right? And what we have done for them is there's a huge amount of data to where their tourists come from. And you'll be familiar with this, like Speedia.com, Bookings.com, TripAdvisor. All this information on the internet is available. Right? And there's the information from, of course, the country itself, tourism coming into the country, 
the profile of tourists, the time they spend on the site, the time they, the attractions they like, the restaurants they go to. The completion and understanding of this data, or this information, gives you insights to how do you improve tourism. But just the size of that, you can't do it humanly, right? You can't do it. So we apply the concept of big data analytics where we co-aggregate this data, right? Of course, respond, respecting privacy rights across the, data, the use of data, but we work with the tourism board to aggregate this data, to find patterns, to identify how and where people are coming from. What does this do for them? It informs the ecosystem, the hospitality ecosystem within the country on how to price their room rates. It helps them improve their attractions. They help them profile restaurants which draw in visitors as a destination. It helps them spend their tourism money in countries where they're most likely to have profile of tourists that will come. Okay. Right, so that's one way that big data analytics have done. And of course, as more data is learned, you could have the AI start to learn and shift, you know, when you put on your tourism website, you know, if someone's coming from Lebanon, would you direct him to direct him or her to a restaurant that she'll like that will increase her, her desire to come to your country? Okay. Right? So these are some applications of how the technology can be applied. So it can, what I hear from you, it can be applied in many different sectors. That's correct. And different verticals. So be it uh, the finance, banking industry, uh, the tourism, and I think in security and healthcare. So it's That's across correct. the board. That's correct. So the technology exists. We continue to develop the most advanced algorithms. We continue to develop our capability to understand big data. But I think what's most important to us and my team, it's how we apply it to this. So like the sectors you described, can we do this to improve public safety, make a community safer? Can you apply to transportation, improve traffic management, improve congestion? Can you apply to healthcare? Can you use it to improve telemedicine and the reach of medical care to areas that have been difficult? How do you use technology, particularly big data analytics and AI, to support and make this decision so that the citizens can benefit? Thomas, when I, when I, when I think of pre-site, I find very advanced. But when I look at it from the developing countries, so you're able to help the UAE because it's very advanced technologically, and they are going towards smart cities and everything is being smart here. But how do you help emerging and growing countries uh, when it comes to the varying AI technology maturity? Well, I think for one, uh, you're right, pre-site is advanced. So the core of pre is an advanced AI and analytics-driven platform. But when you go to a country, you know, in UAE, it's wonderful. We are ranked number 21 on the UN e-government index. We're an advanced country. We can apply advanced algorithm to support the work that the, our clients need to do. But when you go to a country that's emerging, they could be at different stages. In a country where they are working to bring their paper to digital, so that everything's on paper and need to bring it to digital, we can still apply AI. The AI we apply there is natural language processing that takes the documents they have, understand what it says in the native language that it's in, okay. and turn it into insightful and meaningful information that can be used to power future digital transformation initiatives that they have. So you can cater any solution depending on the requirements and the maturity of the country when it comes to technology. Yes, at, at, at the core of what we do is not about a technology looking for a problem. Okay. You know, when we speak with our clients, when we speak with our organization and the nations that we work with, we first identify what are their priorities. We take a good look at what is the infrastructure they have to support them. And then we look forward and say, okay, which part of our technology can we apply to help them achieve the most efficient and the most effective way for their digital transformation aspirations. All right. So um, what I'm hearing here is that pre can support the advanced countries technology-wise, the mature countries, the, let's say developing, or even the ones who are at the beginning of the beginning with, Absolutely. let's say, zero infrastructure, pre can still come in there and, and, and add value Absolutely. and help them to take, take the first steps further. Yes. Okay. Well, I just want to imagine, like, um, can, you give me, can you give me an example, um, let's say from a government sector, that Presight is supporting them in a way um, to help them advance their services? I'll give you an example. In countries where they need 
to improve the transformation of the Justice Department. And what happened in the Justice Department? You have case files from past investigations, you have existing court cases that are in place, and you have a need to clear those court cases so that the justice system continue to function carefully. We have a client that I've approached us to look at a solution. How do you bring their paper court documents into a digital platform? And then thereafter, how do you use that digital asset that they've created to transform the manner in which court cases are trialed, judged, and sentence are passed? We continue to work with this organization to look at how we could do digital transformation across the way they manage their court cases, including the ability to do tele conferencing for passing of cases. Okay, so I know this is a quite weird question, but if we look at it, if a human is supposed to do this job compared to pre site with the AI and the big data analysis analytics, how much difference from years perspective? So how much would a human need <laughs> and how much would um, I, I think what pre site required to do that? I think we're talking about years and days. That's okay. one thing. But that's not just the only metrics you should look at. The accuracy of it, the ability to build on top of the digitalization that they have done. So if you use AI and you use algorithmic approach to digitize a process, you are more likely to be accurate and be able to create information that can use that supports future transformation, including the application of AI. If a human is to do that, I would think that time is the basis errors that will happen, that will continue and may not support or corrupt the data that you need to do future predictive analytics to do future transformation work. Okay, that answers my question. Right. Um, Thomas, we want to wrap it up in a summary. When you talk about digital journey for a country, okay, um, be it emerging or be it developed from a technology perspective, how can Presight enhance it? That's a really good question to, to sum this up, you know. Um, with the technology we've developed, we've applied it to developed countries like the UAE, we've taken it to countries in Africa, but the core of it is this. Do we know what the country wants to achieve? Right, that's, that's fundamental. I know I keep harping on this, but this is fundamental to what it is. We are proud to own the technology that is adaptable, that is advanced, but we must be cognizant that whatever technology that my team builds, that we build and we apply, must serve one purpose at the end. It must improve the lives of the people that we touch. So I'm talking about the citizens, the organizations. Do we make their workflows better? Do we make a city safer? Do we make healthcare more available because we're using a data-centric decision-making workflow and not just policies uh, with no strong evidential backing? I think that's the core of how I would sum up where we want our technology to be and how we want Presight to continue to add value to these countries and the organizations that we touched. Well, that sums it up. And it, it sums up uh, our, our main discussion point of how can AI and big data analytics drive transformation to deliver scalable value to humanity. So, this I is hope, what it's all about. I hope that answered the question. It does, it does. Thank you so much, Thomas. That was great. I look forward to seeing you in the future podcasts also to cover more topics and more intense topics on the big data and AI. And thanks once again for being with us. Absolutely. Such a pleasure speaking with you and thank you for having us on the podcast. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you soon. That brings us to the end of the show. We hope that this conversation has contributed to a foundation of how can AI and big data analytics drive transformation to deliver scalable value to businesses, nations, and societies. Thanks for listening to G42 On Air. If you enjoy our show, please rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to come back next time. Until then, this is May Said Ali signing off from Jitex.